So in case you missed it, Ubisoft released their Star Wars Outlaws trailer a few days ago and of course, as we all know, it's not a complete Ubisoft product unless it is served with a slice of delicious controversy. You're goddamn right. So the first issue that I want to get into is the fact that they made k look like uh, the forgotten sister of one of the crones from Witcher 3. And then we'll get into the actual conversation that people are supposed to be having instead of arguing about the price point of this game. And our ears. So first and foremost guys, I'm not really surprised that the industry continues to keep shoving ugly women down our throats. I mean guys, to go out of your way to make women ugly on purpose just so you can feel good about yourself it's just it's sick man it's so twisted and perverted i mean what kind of a person do you have to be to get so pressed and threatened by a non-existent beautiful female game character i mean guy people are gonna like what they like man women are gonna like their romantic novels and things of that nature and how sexualized the men are in those novels that's fine why is it that when men like what they want apparently that's a bad thing make it make sense what is with this double standard, man? These people, it's all about them. They feel ugly, so they think the solution is to make everything else ugly so that they feel good about themselves. They run to us, Sam. We're done for. What kind of logic is that? Maybe your father didn't spend enough time with you. Maybe your mother didn't spend enough time. You didn't get the type of attention from your parents. We at Ubisoft are going to be releasing our newest game, Star Wars Outlaws. Okay, cool. This actually looks really good. For your convenience, we'll be providing the game at three different price points. The base game will be available at $70, Gold Edition at $110, and the Ultimate Edition will be available at $130. And just like that, I have lost all interest in this game. I'll just wait to buy it during your Black Friday sale. What? Why? You said it looked good. It does look good, but I'm not paying extra to a greedy company who is locking content behind a paywall. It's an absolute joke that you think people will drop $130 for this. Well, you don't have to drop $130. And you don't have to release gold or ultimate editions. Well, we're providing players up to three days of early access. I don't care. The reason why I say that gamers are complaining about the wrong thing in terms of the pricing of this game. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. Gamers need to remember that Ubisoft has already stated explicitly and publicly that they want you to be okay not owning your games. Over my damn body. So if there's a company that says something like that, I don't see why, as a logical thinking person, why you would want to go out and keep supporting a company that does that. Think, Mark! Guys, let's be serious about our lives here. <laughs> these people already stated explicitly that, guys, you don't own crap, you're just renting. Don't buy the product, cause it's gonna get taken away from you at some point and you're just gonna waste your money. Let us seriously consider the things that we invest our money in. And if there's a company that simply doesn't want you to own anything, then what is the point of buying anything from them in the first place? Seems logical to me. If you needed any more proof that we own nothing, this is it. The Crew is a racing game from Ubisoft that came out back in 2014 and was an always online racing game. It wasn't the best in the world, but it was pretty good. People enjoyed it and it got a ton of sequels. But now in 2024, The Crew is going offline. That's pretty standard stuff. It's been 10 years, people just aren't playing the game anymore, Ubisoft needs to cut those servers and free up some bandwidth. The game went offline on March 31st, and instead of Ubisoft giving players a way to play the game offline, a private server, even just giving offline compatibility and some kind of way, they're literally taking it out of your library. In fact, if you play the game on PC, it sits on an inactive games page where it says, and I kid you not, you no longer have access to this game. Why not check the store to pursue your adventure? They stole it from me, Carmine. They took it. Shout out to feminism! Come on now, dog. Come on, man. Why are all the most recent Xbox first party games running the worst on Xbox? It was just announced that the anticipated sequel to Hellblade, Hellblade 2, is locked at 30 frames a second on both Xbox consoles. Again! 
games, just like Starfield and just like Redfall. And both of these were first person shooters. But don't worry, you're going to get a more cinematic experience. If you're gonna lie, lie better than that. And I think I really take issue with this because we all know this is BS. Because on computer, it's uncapped. Are you gonna rob them of this cinematic experience you speak of? And look, do not twist anything I'm saying. I'm not saying you shouldn't play a game because it's in 30 frames a second or that makes it unplayable. But like, this was Xbox. We were told 60 FPS was going to be the standard output. Like, I thought this was supposed to be the most powerful console ever. These consoles were marketed to us as 4K 60. And then, four years later, after these consoles have already hit the market, none of them are able to meet the expectations that they themselves said that they were going to meet. So it's perfectly reasonable for people to be mad and be like, guys, why are we getting 30 frames when you said that we're gonna get 4K 60? You lied to me, you lied to me, you lied to me! Oh, oh, you just got... Oh my fucking god! I thought I was safe! I thought I was safe! <laughs> This is test footage for the scrapped Batman Beyond animated movie that was going to be released theatrically. Bro. Look at this. Oh, that looks so good. Look at Neo Gotham. Giving into the Spider-Verse vibes because the people involved with those films were involved with this. Dude. Bro, bro, that is straight out of the animated series. Oh my god, I am convinced Warner Brothers doesn't like money. They don't want to make any money. We all would go to see this. You know, guys, Marvel and DC have a knack for snatching defeat out of the jaws of victory. I mean... <laughs> I lost hope in these companies a long time ago, but even I was surprised when I heard that the Batman animated movie was cancelled. They, they have the audacity to show you what it was going to look like. And it's like, okay guy, what are we supposed to do with this? Like, wh what's the point? Why are you showing us this? Why not just keep your mouth shut? We didn't need to see this, man. Come on, it only makes you look bad at the end of the day. Hey man, can I just get a water cup? Yeah. Is that water? Sprite. You wanted Sprite. She had stardom, but she didn't have pay equality. Ah, oh, shit. Here we go again. I definitely grew up in a time with major pay disparity between the lead actor and myself even though i had been in bring it on and he hadn't no way you mean to tell me that you grew up in a time with the lead actor of a sequel coming off the back of a blockbuster hit somehow made more than the people in supporting roles how alien i didn't i didn't even think to ask nobody questioned it yeah male executives didn't question that's it. right they, these were all inherited opinions. Question what? You know, I used to be the biggest MJ supporter, simply based off of nostalgia. But now I'm starting to realize that everybody else was correct. Gwen Stacy on top. She would never do this kind of nonsense. But I was in Bring It On. So? But I was the little girl in Jumanji. What? Not only does Mary Jane want every single man that steps foot into New York City. She's a hog. But wouldn't you know, she wants more money too. In all honesty, the journalist probably set up the question in a way that made Kirsten seem ungrateful. She did also mention that at the time she was too young and too new to really know any better and she didn't know how to ask for more. But if she does feel some type of way, she should probably blame that on her agent for not knowing how to negotiate. It's called Spider-Man for a reason though. It's not called Mary Jane and the Seven Situationships. He called. Disney's push for the concept of gender swapping in Deadpool 3. Now specifically with Ryan Reynolds actively involved with Deadpool 3 and the ongoing battle against Disney's plan for reshoots to of course being now in late April that will last until May, just two months before the release of the film in July. 
One major development involves actor Ryan Reynolds teaming up with director Sean Levy, in which they recently held a victory against Bob Iger's push for DEI into the third act of Deadpool 3, where both Bob Iger and Kevin Feige of Marvel Studios were in fact pushing the concept of a gender-swapped version of Wolverine that would be introduced into the third act of the film by use of the multiverse. Oh God! Oh God! Essentially, the scene that was already created by Kevin Feige and pressed upon the writers like Paul Wernick and Rhett Reese involves a literal female version of Wolverine that would engage in a fight with Hugh Jackman's Wolverine. Not only was this planned to be a gender-swapped version of Wolverine, not to be confused with X-23 or any kind of similar character to Wolverine, but was also going to hold a strong DEI agenda with forced cringe dialogue that was hand-picked and improvised by Kevin Feige and forced upon both Rhett and Paul to put into the script. How do you do that? How do you do that? The scene was written and it was also loosely rehearsed, however a serious turn of events recently occurred where Ryan Reynolds was the one responsible for gathering everyone to essentially stand their ground against Disney to prevent this scene from ever getting filmed during the planned and upcoming reshoots. My nigga. <laughs> Ryan Reynolds, Sean Levy, and Hugh Jackman, just for starters, for example, all refused to take part in the forced reshoots by Disney and Marvel Studios revolving around the gender-swapped Wolverine, and it's creating a serious shakeup behind the scenes at the Walt Disney Company, so much to the point that Bob Iger recently and abruptly backed off and canceled the concept of the gender-swapped version of Wolverine from another universe that was going to win in a fight against Hugh Jackman's classic Wolverine in the yellow suit. That's what I'm talking about! That's why he's the MVP! That's why he's the GOAT! The GOAT! Now, Reynolds reportedly knew this was taking things too far and that it would certainly drive fans away from the film. The battle for the third act of this movie continues as Disney is actively finding ways to insert DEI in ridiculous concepts for the third act that are immediately supported by Marvel Studios boss Kevin Feige. This is already creating serious drama between Hugh Jackman and the Disney heads, and Bob Iger is already considering not including Hugh Jackman as Wolverine in other projects planned for the Disney Plus Marvel projects. Y'all, y'all smoking crack! Something is wrong with you people! That were planned to use Wolverine as a cameo to set up Marvel's Phase 7. I mean, guys, this is Disney, man. There's no need to be shocked. This is what they do. But what concerns me is that Disney, it's almost as if they've become these mindless machines that have just been programmed with DEI and gaze and wokeness, and they simply must fulfill the directive. Must complete mission. No matter the cost, it honestly feels as if Disney is being held hostage or is being blackmailed by the gay mafia. Why are you going to such lengths to sabotage yourself? Disney XS has become the company that even institutionalizing racism as well. I mean, that's the reason why they're being sued by Elon Musk anyway. According to Musk, Disney's training revolves around institutionalized racism and sexism, enforcing content inclusion standards that focus on on-screen representation. Disney's leadership standards focus on having 50% or more producers and writing staff being non-white, along with other requirements for directors and casting directors. Musk points out that these standards have nothing to do with merit or talent, but are exclusively about meeting diversity quotas. But you know what? I'm simply grateful for actors like Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman. People who actually care and love what it is that they do to the point of that even protect it and stand up to the corporate heads and say that like, nah, guy, that ain't gonna fly here. I'm not gonna do that. If you do this, I'm not gonna be a part of that. I have hope that when Deadpool 3 comes out, it's going to be a movie that we're all going to enjoy. And it's gonna be thanks to these two gentlemen. Anyway, as usual, Thank you, you awesome, fantastic people for tuning in and for uh, liking and subscribing and supporting my content, giving my life a bit of meaning. Remember, stay frosty and VWIW. Vote with your wallet. <laughs>